Um, very important is to know about 2D continuum elements. And this is very important. These are not 2D elements. These are 2D representations of a continuum. So if you do simple 2D modeling, you can do simple 2D modeling, but if you want to depict, a, so to say, a cross-section of reality, you have to use 2D continuum elements. And we basically um, differentiate between three general classes, whereas the first is the plane strain elements, where you assume the out-of-plane strains um, is zero. So we have, uh, luckily, a picture here. So a quite common application is the, is the dam. So in this case, you can really assume that if you model a cross-section, like the one shown here, it's really just part of an almost infinite, infinitely thick uh, structure. Because your, you can hopefully understand that your out-of-plane strain is only then really zero if your structure is infinitely large. So in reality, even a dam is of finite size, but if you really just look at a small, um, cut out a small section of it, um, then assuming that it's zero is perfectly fine because even in reality it will be super mini small. So um, this is okay to assume it. Um, the second uh, type is the plane stress elements. So you assume that the plane, uh, the out of plane stress is zero. This is used to model thin structures. However, I would say um, you can say plus more. So I, will, I want to give you an example in this case. So I was modeling the forming of a gear. Ah, yeah, no, not that type of gear. So I don't know. So think about this as a gear. As you already know, I'm bad at drawing, but anyways. So this gear was relatively flat, so a couple of millimeters. And now think about if I, so we want to look at this from the side now. Uh, think about if I now enter this material from the right using some sort of punch. So we apply velocity. Oh, come on, God damn it! You know what I want to say. So there is a punch approaching from the right. And then what will the material do? If you do not put any, um, if you do not put anything on top of it, the material will flow in the out-of-plane direction. So if you look at the cross section now here at the center, for example, and would model this as a 2D continuum element, it would be perfectly fine to assume uh, an out-of-plane stress to be zero. So you would use plane stress in this case, because the th 3D case, so to say, is depicted by material flowing out of plane. And you know at boundaries or at surfaces where you do not place any Dirichlet or Neumann um, boundary conditions, the material can flow stress-freely in that particular direction. However, if we now think about the similar case, and put a chambering system on top. This is like very simple chambering system. And then the punch comes from the right. And what will the material flow? It will flow towards the punch. So maybe I should draw this here. So if the punch comes in here and here, in this direction, the material will flow in the plane direction. So that would exactly be a plane strain assumption. So if I want to model this process, I use plane strain because my chambering system, this is just one application of a more real-like example. Um, here in this case, it's perfectly fine to assume no flow in the out-of-plane direction because there is my chambering system. So my chambering system is like this infinitely large white dam compressing 
the material at the point of interest at the plane of interest and then forcing an in-plane flow of the material. So always think about um, free surfaces, um, material flow, uh, think, think really about the problem you want to depict. Um, so this is quite commonly done because going from a 3D continuum to a 2D continuum, if you can really justify the assumption of plane strain or plane stress, then it saves you tons of time. And usually you can put in much more elements so you can have much better contact depiction. So your overall results will be much better, but only if you can justify this assumption. Same holds um, true for the so-called um, CAX elements, the CAX, um, which model a 300, it's, it's a cutout, a cross-section out of a full ring. So this only works if your problem basically looks like the one depicted here. However, think about, for example, a ring compression test. So a ring compression test um, is a perfectly valid example to use this type of CAX elements or if you're um, having, if you're simulating something that has a hole in the middle and you're only simulating the close vicinity around the hole, so for example in some sort of um, um, shear cutting process or punching processes, modeling the vicinity around the hole can also be modeled um, with such kind of elements if you assume that on this edge where you are so to say connected to the remaining um, to the remaining body, you apply certain boundary conditions that you have to justify. Um, nowadays, Abacus provides you even more elements than this, um, especially including axisymmetric elements with a twist um, and uh, with asymmetric deformation. Um, these are only used for very special application. Um, don't. I will talk about um, symmetry later on, so I will give you some more comments uh, uh, later on. I would say I can add plus uh, something like chambering, which you often see in metal forming, where you control the material flow. All right.